All right, so we are ready to um, create our Elastic Beanstalk environment. And to do that, we need to use the ebcreate command. But we're not just going to write ebcreate. We're going to write ebcreate hyphen hyphen single. This hyphen hyphen single, this is a command flag. What it's going to do is tell this to create a uh, environment, an eb environment that is it running in single instance mode. If you don't provide this flag, it's going to spin up an Elastic Load Balancer. Elastic Load Balancers cost money. Uh, technically, if you're using the free tier, if, this, if you made this account uh, and you're still in your first year, you get one ELB free running. But, um, you know, we just want to avoid the, uh, these kind of problems. So let's just not use it. And there's, we're not going to really be doing anything with Elastic Load Balancer anyway through this uh, walkthrough. So do EB single. It's going to prompt us with some options. Uh, I'm going to name this study sync prod, even though we're in our environment or developer environment uh, of my AWS account, if you go back up here, mine says exam pro dev, um, I'm going to pretend this is a production application. And I'm just hit enter there, we just want that to be the same. We don't want to use spot instances, but that's a great way to save money. Um, and then it says this insufficient IAM privileges unable to determine if this rule exists, assuming that it exists. And it's going to go ahead and spin that up. I don't know, if this is going to cause us a problem, but we're gonna to have to wait here. And this is just going to take a little bit of time to get uh, going here. So I'm just going to um, wait for this to get started. I'm going to open up another terminal here. And I'm just going to go to study sync here. And uh, I'm just going to type in EB status. And this actually shows us the current status of the application. Right now, the health is gray and the status is launching. If we go over here, you can see I was trying to launch some stuff earlier here. Those are terminated instances. This is the new one here pending and you can see it's a nice dark gray and this mirrors exactly what we're looking at over here so this is going to take about five to ten minutes to launch and i will see you back here momentarily okay so after waiting a little while here i go back here and it says that it successfully launched the ec2 instance so it looks like to me that it's uh all in good working order we go over here and we type in eb status uh, you can see that it says ready and yellow. Yellow is not a great status to have. Um, so if we come back over to uh, the Elastic Beanstalk environment, I can't tell if it's finished yet, but I'm just going to go back here to study sync, click into the yellow here, and it's giving us a warning. It's saying, unable to assume the role, it was Elastic Beanstalk service role. So it's supposed to create that for us, but for whatever reason, um, it just did not. When I first wrote this fall along, it definitely created that for me. So. I'm not sure why it's uh, not creating it, but if we go up to this link here and open it up here, the application clearly is working. So um, yeah, the yellow command's not that great, but uh, maybe it'll go away on its own. I'm just gonna hit refresh. So I'm just gonna wait a little bit here and see if it actually does go away or not. Okay, so our yellow eventually became a red, uh, and it really has to do with this AWS Elastic Beanstalk service role. Uh, this is confusing because when you run EB create, it's supposed to create this for you. It's supposed to actually create two different um, IAM roles. If I go over here, I don't see them in here at all. Now you could go ahead and manually create them. Uh, I've tried to do this and I haven't had much uh, success as well. Um, but there is another way for us to create these roles without us having to do a lot of manual labor. Uh, and Again, you might not have to do this. Those those um, EC2 roles or IM roles uh, may exist, but in my case, I'm just having a hard time today with Elastic Beanstalk. So to get them created, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start another Elastic Beanstalk project. So I'll go here, create a new app. I'll just call it test. It doesn't matter. Because if we launch one from here, it will absolutely um, create us a um, those roles. So I'm just going to go here, go to web server environments. I'm going to leave it as test. I'm going to choose Ruby. I'm going to go down here and launch a sample application. I'll launch Rails. Um, I'm just going to write test in here. Check for availability. That's all good. Hit create environment. And so what that should do is it should trigger through the console uh, that should go create those IM roles. So if I refresh here, now you see they exist. AWS Elastic Beanstalk EC2 role, AWS Elastic Beanstalk service role. So I have no idea why those aren't uh, appearing, but now they do. Um, but the trick is I just need to delete this environment now. So I can't stop this as it's running. So we'll have to wait till it goes through the motions of it uh, for this test environment. And then once it's done here, we'll just go ahead and terminate it. Okay, so the environment spun up and uh, now we just have to go ahead and, and delete it. 
I know this is really silly, but I mean, that's the only way I can get these roles to be created. But, you know, they definitely, definitely should be able to make them manually. And this definitely should automatically happen. But I'm going to go back. Um, I just clicked to all applications here. Then we'll go into uh, here on the right hand side. We'll, we'll see if we can go ahead and delete it here. Um, so I'll just put test in here. And so what that will do is it should automatically start deleting this environment. So if I go into here, it's terminating it. So um, that's that. Um, but this environment is just no good. So um, what we'll do is, I mean, we can terminate it, I suppose. I guess what we'll do is we'll just terminate this environment as well. So I'm just going to go here and type this in here. And I'm just going to wait for this one to uh, delete. Um, and then we'll try EB create again. And hopefully we won't have any issues this time around. Okay, so I did a refresh there and it's terminated. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Cloud9. And I'm going to try this again. So I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to our first tab here. I'm going to do, I'm going to just hit up. It's going to ask me for the name. So I'm going to do study sync prod. Hit enter again. Uh, we don't want spot here. And it's saying that uh, AWS Elastic Beanstalk EC2 role, it can't find it. That's okay. When I first did this, I had that error and it wasn't an issue. Um, but let's just really make sure that it actually is there. Because as long as it's there, that's all that matters. Okay, so the role is there. So we shouldn't have any problems this time around. Um, but we'll just wait here and see what the result is. I'm just going to go over to Elastic Beanstalk, give it a refresh, click in here, and we'll just wait a few minutes and see how it goes. Okay, great. So um, this Elastic Beanstalk has gone green. So um, us creating that temporary application, even though as silly as it is, uh, fix the issue here. Uh, hopefully you don't have to do that and those roles just exist for you. Um, so if we go over to Cloud9 here, I'm just going to do a clear here. If you do EB status, that's going to show you um, the status here. So green and ready, which is the same thing that is over here. Um, if we wanted to go view this web application, it shows the C name in here. So if I copy this out, we can see we have a link there. Um, if we scroll up here, we can also see that it signed us an Elastic IP address. So that's another way of accessing uh, the web application here is that IP address. Um, if we typed in EB logs, this would show us um, what happened actually on the EC2 instance if anything was logged out. I might have showed you this prior, but I'm going to just show you quickly here again. And so you can see that the application started up here. I'm not sure what's going on uh, down below here. I don't think that matters, but this is what we really do want to see. We'll hit Q to exit that out there. If we type in EB events, that is going to show us the event history that has happened. Um, so if you go over here in events, that's the same information here. Really great way to debug stuff. And I want to point out that the deployment, um, the deployment model we're using is all at once right now. We haven't actually done a deploy yet. We've, I mean, we technically have deploy, but we haven't deployed to an existing um, environment. So I'm just showing you that it's using all at once. Um, and so the next thing we're going to do is switch this over to immutable and see what the difference is there. Um, but we're not going to do it in here. We could just click immutable, hit apply, and then do a deploy. But I want to do everything to the console. So that's what we're going to do next here. So let's get to that.